innovation. Without it, the world stands still. Without innovation, there is stagnation. This is the reason we build. The reason we study, analyze, experiment, and push forward. Since the first car took to the streets, we have evolved them year after year. Engine technology, tire technology, suspensions, chassis, and every other aspect of the car has improved. Then in 2007, something special happened. The Ultra 4 car was born. But it wasn't an Ultra 4 car yet. In 2007, these cars represented more of a square peg and a round hole approach to the equally new King of the Hammers style racing, utilizing slow speed rock crawling equipment in an attempt to tackle the desert at speed. Buggies made the Dodge Cones at one mile per hour and the design philosophy that had produced them were now tossed head first into an otherwise high speed style of racing that begged them to keep up. What started as barn-built rock crawlers fumbling through the California desert slowly became purpose-built, fully custom King of the Hammers race cars. Over the years, these cars would come in many shapes and sizes, some designed to go fast in the desert, others designed to excel in the rocks, and the remainder focusing on a more balanced approach. With this came a fierce debate on design and function, with the primary focus being on suspension design, style, and geometry. The independent suspension versus the solid axle. IFS or solid axle? The debate will, I don't know that that one will ever get settled out. That's a million dollar question of the IFS versus solid axle. The battle rages on and what will win? Whatever the, the best team that day is running. Well, I, I definitely think IFS is by far the way to go. I've won twice, both times in a solid axle car, but after building an independent front suspension truck, I knew I would never want to race a solid axle car ever again. You know, I've got my like, my like must haves. And until those are checked off on the other side of the question, I'm, I'm a solid axle guy. I, I think there's guys that are running solid axle cars like Eric Miller and Randy Slauson that are just killing it with a solid axle. But then you got guys like the Gomez brothers, the Campbells that all have IFS cars and they're making them work in the desert and in the rocks. Our Ranger that we've raced out here since the start of King of the Hammers, it's solid axle car. Well, we, we were 28 seconds out of the win in 2010. Now we'd be lucky to finish the unlimited race in that vehicle. I, I don't know what the right answer is. You, you'll see Solid Axle is winning out here. Solid Axle has won the last two years in the unlimited race. I understand from talking with Lauren Healy that his new equipment is reaching trophy truck speeds out here in the desert. So if you can get a 4400 going trophy truck speeds and still with the capability to get through the rocks, you got a pretty wicked weapon. We started in a clapped out trail buggy in 2009 that we built in our garage, you know, had no budget for it whatsoever. And it's what we were out doing, wheeling on the weekends every time to a spaceship now. It's, it's been wild. Uh, you know, Shannon came out with independent front suspension in like 2010 or 11 and, and all of us were like, independent suspension is never gonna work. Now we got an independent rear suspension carb. When I first started, I came out here with a little solid axle rock racer and 
the next year I was like, man, I need an A-arm car because we're not, you know, the trails weren't, it wasn't like rock crawling. And I brought out a IFS car that I had helped design from Pro-Am and uh, it ended up being laughed at for, you know, the whole week or whatever. And then race day came and I, had, I broke the tranny in about five miles, but it was so fast that it just, you know, everything needed to evolve with it. And we come back in after a two hour ch tranny change, you know, we still finished like ninth or something like that. And then when Shannon came to KOH the first year with the IFS car, it really kind of put people on their tails. At that point in time, you either had to put up or shut up. You had to really come up with a better car. And that's when the energy kind of hit too, you know. People really started looking at how to do it better. And I was one of them. These particular IFS cars, we do a few different things. We have A-arm pivots that are behind the CV, which has never been done before in any sport that I know of. Where we have the driver sitting is a central seated position, which is unique to Ultra 4 as well. There's a lot of little pieces that add up that kind of make the car what it is. If I use only one component at a time, it wouldn't really do much. When you add all the good parts together in one package, it makes a big difference in you know, the way the car handles. I don't think personally that a Stratus car has been fully built to its potential yet. I'd love to build one, but for an IFS car, it's still the premium. I mean, that's the best way to get a guy in a car and have him feel comfortable and be confident and be able to drive it at speed. And in the rocks, I don't care what he says, there's, the IFS cars don't have any issues in the rocks. They, they all get through them. I can't give up the quickness that the steering angle provides, the forced articulation and traction that you gain from a solid axle vehicle where the independent cars just don't have that. And no matter how strong you build them, they're not these cars. I, I, I love that aspect of this, this platform that it can just handle whatever you throw at it and ask for it again the next day. And so you can turn an independent car 50 degrees, keep all the tires on it when you really run out of talent. I'm gonna pick a straight axle every day. You have to be an exceptional rock, rock racer, rock crawler, to be able to drive an IFS car in the rocks. Exceptional. You have to be an exceptional driver to drive a solid axle car as fast as Eric Miller drives in the desert. If you are in the middle of either one of those talents, drive a solid axle car because you'll get to the finish. The solid axle car is not gonna keep you from getting to the finish in the desert. You're just gonna get there slower and a little more pain. An IFS car will be broken into little tiny pieces of very expensive parts if you don't know how to drive it on the rocks. Ultra 4 car has stayed the same. The basic principles of what makes an Ultra 4 what it is are actually quite simple. Big tires, big motors, and big metal. But one thing is for sure, cars were now faster, much faster, and they were stronger to match. While some kept it simple, others aimed for the stars. More advanced electronics would begin to take shape, creating an unprecedented electrical draw on an otherwise simple mechanical beast. On the fly, variable valve shocks, large external lighting, GPS systems, engine management computers, and a whole host of other technological advancements brought these cars closer than ever to their rock-crawling ancestors' nickname, 
of moon buggies. We've seen, you know, from what Ultra 4 started as, two seat, front engine, solid axle, the guts and the heart of really what an Ultra 4 car was, it's parked behind me. And then you have the, the other side of the table where we've got spaceships out here that have four wheel independent suspension, electronic shock technology, more gears in the drivetrain than three of my cars. Crazy complex, highly engineered, yet fragile machines, untested, right? There's at least two fully independent cars that are, are debuting this year that are gonna be untested. And they're gonna be tested here at King of the Hammers for really the first time. The electronics that are in here are unreal now. We've got live valve shocks. We're on a dual alternator systems to deal with, you know, all the amperage that are high powered lights draw, which requires, a, you know, a dual yellow top battery system to keep the electronics and keep everything happy on, on this race truck. Everything's monitoring temperatures, pressures, sensors, you know, there, there's so much going on to it and the shocks are taking all that data into it and making adjustments while I'm doing 120 miles an hour through the desert. It's obviously more complicated with independent rear suspension and four gear portals at every corner. There's so many moving parts, but it's such a cool race truck. Originally this car was built for the 09 King of the Hammers. So this is, from my knowledge, the oldest car that's still racing King of the Hammers and maybe the most races of under Indy car. Um, racing for you know, well over 10 years now. These cars, there's so few things. There's like six switches in the car besides the on-off button and a kill switch. And there's just not a lot going on. It's very simple. There's barely any extra things you have to worry about and work on to maintain. It's one of the smallest cars I think out here. It's only 83 inches outside tire. So squeeze to the trails, this is a perfect rock crawling car that does well in the desert. It's a wild car to drive though. I also have a Trent Fab car that I've driven before. And dr between the two, the Trent Fab car is much more stable, where this car can go a lot faster because it's, it's kind of on the verge of out of control the whole time. So it's like the wild stallion of a car. So if you're not uh, have the gumption to drive it at that speed, it's a miserable car to drive. So you have to really push it hard and then the car will just take off. Uh, but you gotta be willing to do it. You're going from cars that were sixty dollars to $100,000 racing hammers and you're competitive. And now, you know, in even in 2014, you're spending 250,000 on a car that in two years was outdated again. We use the best pieces that we can put in because those are the pieces that can last. We try to run the best tires, we run the best wheels that we know last, we run the best batteries that we know last, drivetrain parts, electrical systems, suspension systems, choosing the right suspension guy. It's, it's, it's like a giant puzzle that you have to figure out on your own because no one's going to tell you how to do it. level you have to be at you know to, to build these things actually make them win is just at another level so that that big step you went from guys who are fabricating stuff in their garage and that step to okay we're gonna make it we're gonna do it professionally now that professional step I think is the biggest change I mean because all the guys that were doing it all had the talent but at the time you're building rock crawlers where it's, it was a little more you know angle iron and MIG welding now we're TIG welding with 4130 and using high-end materials and every one of those little parts have been a, has been a progression there are systems on the vehicle that are put into extreme torture test situations, like, like the electrical system, like the drivetrain, the tires for that matter even. I have redundant setups in all. The electrical system is one of that. I run a, a fully isolated two battery system for the simple fact that there's so much load on the system from heat and the accessories. If I get in a situation where I lose an alternator, God forbid, due to packing up with dust because there's no wind and we're just following still, my car will show me quick, I'm losing that alt and I'm only on one battery. I have a full Optima yellow top ready to go that I can just click a switch to, swap that alt and fire it back off.
So I would explain an Ultra 4 car as the challenges that they have to be able to endure is like no other sport. Things that you should not be driving on, these things just go up with ease. It's a constant battle and compromise. And I think that's the beauty of the Ultra 4 cars. You just, it's so wonderful to see what people come up with. The sport started with rock crawling, which, you know, like the, the name says, you'd crawl over the rocks. And we don't do that anymore. We, we race over them. You know, the faster we go, the harder everything breaks. It's everything in a package that just is meant to go fast and be right on the edge. I mean, and you watch these drivers and their skill set and their level of driving do unbelievable things that even five years ago weren't possible, but the technology has progressed. There are vehicles that can do just about anything you can imagine in off-road motorsports, whether it be short course style racing to uh, going through the hardest rock trails that exist in America. They're skilled to operate. Anyone can get in and make it move, but you gotta be skilled to drive it and operate it, and that's what's different. You know, you're, you're basically fighting gravity, you're fighting physics. It's the, the center of people's reason to do things. It's the reason why everybody comes to your shop and sits in a shop like this and drinks with their friends and keeps building something. It's the vehicle to get you to your goal. It's whatever you make it out to be. That's part of that culture we have. It's, it's whatever you want it to be. Donks of Four Car is a vehicle built to do things you shouldn't be doing in vehicles, period. Once considered to be a fringe class of off-road racing, these cars would soon drive development of scores of new industry products and arguably provide inspiration to even the most vaunted of desert racing machines. The modern Ultra 4 car would eventually come to represent some of the most capable off-road vehicles ever created in any form. drive can't work what are you talking about oh oh i'm bryce bryce menzies and i'm building a four-wheel drive trophy track i feel like they should be in some kind of four-wheel drive anonymous club yeah i'm bryce menzies and i have a four-wheel drive hi bryce <laughs>